Hey there, welcome to Main Street Living. I'm Cheryl Nelson. Hey guys, I'm Quincy Carr. And I'm Danielle Alvari. <laughs> well, Danielle, Quincy, you know, it's kind of funny. I was doing some research and there are a lot of incentives around the world for people to get vaccinated. It's, it's pretty interesting. I've got to ask Q, I think you were going to get something, right? Uh, well, yeah. So after I got my second shot, I, did, I, I was told all you got to do is present your your card at Krispy Kreme. Who doesn't want Krispy Kreme? Oh, yum! The hot light is on, and I and I, I roll up the and I'm hot like, light is on. <laughs> I'm like, I'm vaccinated. They say, here you go, sir. And I'm like, thank you. Yes, warm donuts are the absolute best. Yes. Yeah, you know, nobody's offered me any incentives yet. I, I've had my vaccine. Sure, what would you want? What would you want to get? Like, what would be the best way to bribe Cheryl to do something? Free right. trip. Free trip somewhere cool. <laughs> free trip. She wants travel. <laughs> They're like, ma'am, you cannot travel. Of For course me. I want to travel. Well, but speaking of travel, this is actually pretty interesting. So in my research, I found out different countries are giving away different things. So Mexico apparently is giving away free concerts. That's wow. pretty cool, right? And then Romania, free vaccine in Dracula's castle. I don't know if that's cool or creepy. <laughs> um, China is giving free eggs or chicken wings. Wouldn't work for me, a vegan. Um, what else do we have here? Russia offering free ice cream. That's what you and want. And in the U.S., what we found so far, free donuts. Q, as you mentioned, beer is another one. $100 savings bonds and also gift cards. And then some workplaces, too. Are giving incentives. I know my husband's workplace. I forget what they're giving him, but it's it's a you know, nice little sum of cash there, a little bit of a bonus. So that's yeah. that's pretty cool. That Romania one sounds a little sketch to me. Dracula's castle. They're gonna have some <laughs> guy bite your neck and be like, "There you go, you're vaccinated." Oh my right, yeah. Where are they gonna put the vaccine? Are they putting it in? <laughs> <laughs> they're putting it in Dracula, and then he's yeah with yeah. the assist. It yeah. Is, yeah, it is kind of creepy there with with the blood and Dracula and the castle, the vaccine. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. I think I think the overall theme is obviously. You know, once you feel comfortable, you get your vaccine. And, you know, as the world begins to open up more, I think that that's what people are looking forward to. So we certainly appreciate the incentives. Yeah, definitely. I love some of that stuff. I got to find myself some freebies. But <laughs> anyway, guys, we've got another great show lined up for you today. We're going to tell you about, speaking of freebies, a motorcycle giveaway and also an auto dealer giving back. That's right, Cheryl. Well, also, we are also getting healthy and a little bit of, well, we got a little bit of bootcraft going on there. Plus, we're going to have cancer screening information, too. And we can tell you how you can become a mentor for a teen in foster care. But first, are you guys ready to do some time traveling? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> of course, Cheryl. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Um, Danielle and Cheryl, um, I have to admit, after a year of Netflix binging on the couch or the bed, uh, you know, I kind of feel ready to get back out. And I'm sure a lot of people do to try some hands on interactive experiences with oh, friends yeah. and family, right? Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Maybe something that even challenges both your body and your brain. So if you're interested in that, you have to check out the time zone in Rhode Island here to tell us all about this incredible land of adventure. We have the master of time travel himself, Peter Martins. Welcome to Main Street Living. I am all Whoa. about time travel. Huge Back to the Future fan. So thank you for joining us. Nice. for Thank you for having me. It's a wonderful. Thank you. Of course. And so obviously this looks so cool. Kind of somewhere in between an immersive video game and an escape room. What exactly is happening at Time Zone? Yeah, so it's uh, we have around 10,000 people now that did it. And a lot of people say like, oh, this is much more different than I expected. So I hear people say it's like being in a video game or it's like a cross between escape rooms and Legends of the Hidden Temple. I'm from Europe originally, so I don't know that show. But that's like you, you get immersed into this video game with 25 different mini games basically. Ooh. 
Wow. Well, so there are different rooms, right? What are some of the different room themes? Yeah. So I, I guess I cannot really pick my favorite one. It's like picking my favorite kit. But <laughs> what I hear from other people is often, whoa, this laser maze. So we have one room that has haze in it and lasers and just like Katrine Zeta-Jones in Entrapment, you have to avoid uh, the lasers. There is uh, two rooms uh, where you cannot touch the floor. It's like the floor is lava, so you have to climb and you have to press all kinds of buttons. Um, but we try to make games that are suitable for pretty much everyone. So there is brain games, there is games of skill. Uh, most of these games, everybody can do. And then there is like three or four games that are more physical. Yeah, it sounds like it's perfect for a family outing or maybe a date night, even a, a girl's trip. It sounds like you check all of those boxes there. and so. When you go, do you have to play all the rooms or can you pick and choose? You, you can choose your own journey. So you go into this spaceship. It's a long stretched hallway and all the portals are connected to that hallway. And at every portal, you see how much strength, intelligence, hand-eye coordination and speed that you need to, to win the challenge. And every challenge gives you 100 points. You can replay any portal as often as you like. Sometimes we have people that get stuck into one game because they <laughs> like it so much. It's not yeah. good for their high score, but some people have so much fun in one room that they keep on doing it over and over. You can go and play a portal, go back to a previous one. It's You pick whatever you like. Any available portal, you can play. So this is for everyone then, right? Families, couples, large groups. It is for everyone. So with COVID, it's a little bit restricted for large groups, but we can handle 70, 80 people playing at the wow. same time uh, in groups of three or four. Uh, we have families, uh, grandparents with, with like their grandkids coming. We have double dates. We have date nights. We have bachelor parties. Um, we have seen it all already. We, we have close to 10,000 people that played it so far in all shapes and forms and lengths and ages. What fun ideas there for all of these rooms and all of the games. And how do you know if you're going to, to win or if you're going to get out of a room? I, I know you said something about you yeah. can't so, step in the lava on the floor of one of those rooms. What happens, for example, if you step in the lava? Yeah, so then you lose and you can replay that portal again. But the goal of the game is to score the highest score. Every portal gives you 100 points, so 25 portals, 2,500 portals. The highest scores I've seen so far is like 1,950, just under 2,000. Um, and uh, sorry, no, oh, yeah. And in the hallway, there is a, a big scoreboard where you can see your score. And if you're competing against another team, you can see how well they're scoring compared oh, to your own team. That's fun. You make it competitive. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, now you've got Cheryl. Now she's bought in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the capacity limits, obviously, with COVID. Are you having to make any other adjustments because of COVID right now? Yeah, so we have extra cleaning going on, and we just lowered the capacity. So we the, 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 yeah. the theoretical capacity is like 20, 25 teams playing at the same time. Now we keep it at, at 15. So we adhere to the reopening our eye rules, like I think everybody yeah. else. Now, if somebody's not interested in going into the rooms, you know, maybe their kids want to play, but the parents don't, are there other entertainment opportunities there? Yeah, so our three main activities right now is go-karting, oh. X-throwing, the X-bar, I'm sure Ooh, you've heard of that, yes. and time zone. So these are the three major activities. But other than that, we have uh, uh, an arcade with 50 games, uh, and we have a, a restaurant and a bar. So oh, my gosh. All right. So, yeah, the adults can drop off the kids and then maybe mosey on over to the bar and hang out for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So what's your most popular room or game or activity? What's everybody's favorite thing they have to hit before they leave time zone? It's so different. We send out review emails every week where we try to gauge like what is the favorite yeah. rooms and get reactions. The, the one that I often hear from the smaller, from 
the, 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 the eight to 14 year olds is the laser maze and the floor is lava. But then certain groups, they really like the puzzles. We have, a, we have math puzzles. We have a detective game where you have to decipher using Morse code or binary. So there is people that are more into that. We have two hidden tunnels. So if you find those hidden tunnels, it's almost cool. like it's like an epiphany and you go like, whoa, this is so cool. So everybody builds their own experience. And the ideal playtime is 90 minutes. But because there is so much to discover, every journey is different. And a lot of yeah. people I see in the reviews is like, oh, we only got to play 15 or 20 rooms. We're going to come back to discover the rest. I love it. Always something fun to do there. And this sounds like a destination in New England. So tell us, where can people go to learn more? Uh, the best place to go, obviously, is to our social media to see what it's about. And if you want to book uh, or get more like uh, detailed information, you can go to r1indoorgardening.com. All right. Thank you so Amazing. much for joining us. All right. If I ended up in one of those hidden tunnels, I'd be like, am I supposed to be in here? I don't know. I would help you out. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stick with us. Uh, we're not going down any hidden tunnels. But if you're dreaming of a custom motorcycle, this next segment is for you. Welcome back into Main Street Living, guys. After being cooped up this last year, I just can't wait to get back out somewhere, out on the road, outdoors. Just get me out of the house. Danielle, <laughs> Danielle I don't know if you've ever dreamed of taking to the open road on your custom bike, uh, uh, but maybe even heading to Sturgis, uh, then you may need to pay attention to this. Our next guest may be able to make your dreams come true. Okay, please welcome Ari Levenbaum from Law Tigers. How you doing there, Ari? Hey there. Very well. How y'all doing? Hey, we are doing Good. great. Great. Glad to have you on the show. Now, uh, what exactly are the Law Tigers and how are you different from the other law firms? So Law Tigers is a uh, association of motorcycle injury firms uh, that are local in nature, but are represented throughout the country. And our mission is to represent injured motorcycle riders and also to support the local community through charity, in charity initiatives giving back and really what makes us unique is all we do is focus on helping uh, the riding community and injured riders when in need. We've been doing it for 20 years and uh, we love, love doing it and love helping out people. Nice. Oh, that's so great to hear. And one thing I heard about is you have a pretty amazing contest for your motorcycle loving friends. Yeah, we've got a really cool uh, giveaway. Uh, my good friend Paul Yaffe, who you're going to meet here momentarily, and I uh, worked together on my Tiger Glide, as, as he uh, aptly named it, last year, which is the bike I rode to Sturgis, and it's a beautiful 2020 uh, Street Glide. And uh, I loved it so much, I said to Paul, look, I think we need to do something like this and give it away Ooh. to one lucky winner. And so we have a contest every year called Styling in Sturgis, and we wanted to take it up another level. Uh, last year, we gave away about $80,000 worth of prizes, mm. uh, never a bike. And this year, we're giving away over $120,000 worth of prizes, three wow. chances to win. And the first place winner is going to get an all-expense-paid trip to Sturgis, courtesy of Law Tigers. And they're going to get a bike, courtesy of Paul Yaffe, Bagger Nation, along with a couple of key friends, uh, Curtis Hoffman, uh, uh, Nick Trask. Um, J.C. Reese, ODC Suspension, to create the most killer custom bike that I think is ever going to be created and given away, courtesy of Paul Yaffe, who is building it and, uh, and working with us to make it uh, a very special occasion. We're going to give it away uh, on stage. Uh, it's a surprise where, but uh, one lucky winner is going to walk away with a bike worth over $85,000 oh, on uh, an all-expense-paid trip. So very exciting. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's being done right now. I'm being built um, right now. That sounds pretty awesome there. I, I kind of want to go for a ride on that bike before you give it away. Well, <laughs> you have to talk to Paul because Paul has the bike and it's being worked on. Maybe he'll uh, 
he'll he'll give you a ride. You gotta ask his wife. She's yeah. Wife. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Paul definitely sounds like an interesting guy. So let's bring the man who's creating this masterpiece, custom <laughs> motorcycle designer Paul Yaffe. Welcome to the show, Paul. Hi. Right, thanks for having me. Good to see so, you. Paul, this sounds so amazing. Okay, no spoilers, but tell us a little bit about the bike that you're designing for the Sturgis giveaway. Well, so the, the Styling and Sturgis giveaway bike is, uh, well, Ari got me a brand new 2020 Harley Davidson Road Glide model. Uh, and then we, of course, have taken the bike completely apart. And I've called on a few friends of mine in the industry, uh, Curtis Hoffman from a company called Hoffman Designs, who is the king of carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, he makes carbon fiber bodies, uh, very NASA type materials uh, that he's uh, very light, uh, very strong materials that he's making a body for the bike for. And then uh, Nick Trask uh, from Trask Performance is the king of turbochargers. And he's putting a turbocharger on the engine, which will bring it up to about 160 horsepower. Uh, and then some friends of mine from Italy, from Milan, a company Ooh. called ODC. Uh, they make all the Formula One racing suspensions, and they made me a suspension for the bike, a racing suspension, uh, front fork and rear shocks. Uh, and then, obviously, our business, Bagger Nation, our brand, Bagger Nation, we make tons of products for the Harley-Davidson aftermarket, so it'll be littered with our uh, custom goodies. And then JC from Rolling Art Custom Paint uh, is going to do a really cool custom paint job on it. Uh, and then we've got a few other surprises, too. And then Ari and I are going to like I said, do the sweepstakes, and then uh, we're going to fly somebody to Sturgis and uh, present them with a brand new custom motorcycle. So Pretty cool. cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about coming out there. Uh, I'll, I'll fly out, and I can go for a test ride on the bike and give Absolutely. my experience to people. I think that would be amazing. Absolutely. And and you design bikes. You've got a shop in Phoenix as well. What else is unique about what you design? Well, I design all kinds of stuff, but, but motorcycles is certainly what I'm known for. Um, you know, you'd like it. My career started in designing high-end women's shoes. What? So you and I would get along fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when my wife has a dress or some outfit and she can't find shoes for it, she always sends me to go find the perfect shoes for her. Outfit. I love it. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> so there, goes, there goes my macho image, right? My bike builder macho image. She does like shoes, as does my wife. I can attest to that. Yeah, you know what? I, I, yeah, who doesn't like shoes, guys? And, you know, I know we've got so much to talk about here, but we are running short on time. So before we wrap up, where can our viewers go to get more information? Uh, you can go to Law Tiger, or I'm sorry, ltsturgis.com. Uh, again, ltsturgis.com. Uh, contest starts on May 15th and runs through July 15th. And uh, anyone can, can sign up. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a banner on our website as well at baggernation.com. Oh, yes. All right. All right, guys. Good stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And all the information there was on the bottom of the screen. Well, coming up on Main Street Living, Quincy, you know I like this. We've got one more happy hour option to talk about. Find out what it is next. Welcome back into Main Street Living. Cheryl Quincy, I don't know if you're with me or not, but did the pandemic end up uh, with you drinking a little bit more too? <laughs> I plead with you. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're talking Just water, gin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just a little bit of water, but Daniela, I can say Americans drink more during the lockdown, which may be partly because, you know, um, so many. What else are we doing? Huh? What else were we doing? <laughs> right, right. So many exactly. Stress try. reliever. <laughs> Right. Well, one of the latest boozy trends, if you can call that, to hit the market is something called hard kombucha. Right. What exactly is that, you ask? I need to take a look at this, too. Kombucha is a fermented black tea. It's brewed with a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Um, it's uh, super healthy for you. It's got all sorts of beneficial uh, bacteria, probiotics, and acids. So we decided to kind of 
do something different than everybody was doing. Everyone was kind of scrambling to try to get their kombucha less than half percent alcohol so that it wouldn't be considered an alcoholic beverage. And we wanted to just do something creative, something new, so we went the opposite direction. So our kombucha is a 7% alcohol, uh, whereas normal kombucha is 1.5%. So it's a fermented food, and one of the byproducts of the fermentation process is alcohol. Beer starts by basically boiling grains to extract the sugars. What we do is we never boil anything, so it's completely unpasteurized, and we supply an organic cane sugar as the food for the yeast, for the culture. It's, it's a nice mix, you know, you've got uh, some health benefits from traditional kombucha, which we're, we're maintaining those uh, probiotics, and it's got alcohol in it, so it's a nice blend for somebody that lives a healthy and active lifestyle that also cares about the food that they put in their body. It makes you feel, I mean, I'm sure it's good for you too, but it makes you feel like you're not just drinking like hard alcohol that's bad for you, you're putting something good into your body as well. I like the way it makes me feel. It's very mellow, very relaxed. It's not a typical hard liquor. It's delicious. The flavors are so good and refreshing. We're all really conscious about our health and about the health of the environment. And so, you know, our, our product's all organic, um, sustainable. We try to buy as much produce from local farmers as possible. I think obviously that we're unique, we're, we're not another beer. Um, there's a lot of beer breweries partner, popping up and so they're all competing for that space. But we're doing something different. It's you know expanding very quickly. It's one of the fastest growing beverages in, in the marketplace. Okay, I need to get me some of that. And I think that's so cool that they use a lot of local produce, mostly organic. I think that's so important to do right now. Right. Yes, agreed. So it's healthy and it has a little bit of booze in it. So I think it's a win-win. It's kind of like shopping <laughs> local too, you know? Yes. <laughs> I'm down to try that. And if you want to try it, you can find out more about Boochcraft, including their current flavors and where to buy some at boochcraft.com. Well, we've got a lot more coming up on Main Street Living. Coming up next, we'll talk about how we can support our foster youth. You don't want to miss it. That's next. Welcome back to Main Street Living. All right, Danielle Quincy, the late great Nelson Mandela once said, the true character of a society is revealed in how it treats its children. Mm. I 100% agree with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in the US, actually, the foster care system was created to care for children who've been removed from their homes because of abuse or neglect, but there are still a lot of cracks for kids to fall through. So our next guest is working to make sure that foster youth have all the skills and support they need to thrive. Please welcome from Promise to Kids, Tanya Tarosian. Tanya, thanks so much for joining us on Main Street Living. Of course, thank you for the opportunity. So there's nearly half a million children in foster care right now, an all time high for the US. What are some of the challenges that these kids are facing right now? Yeah, so like uh, many others, um, obviously uh, depression and, and other related uh, conditions to uh, the COVID over the past, you know, the isolation. But outside of that, a lot of the children, 83% um, have mental health issues. The majority are related to their past trauma of abuse. So um, what's the biggest challenge is that there just aren't enough foster families available uh, to take the number of children that are in foster care. And so mm -hmm. you do see a lot of children um, without the resource of a foster family. So in our community, that may mean that they're in um, Polinsky Children's Center, uh, which is a, a temporary shelter, or they might be moving from temporary home to temporary home. So, um, mm -hmm. and each time, of course, a move disrupts trust and, and, mm -hmm. and somebody's life. So it, compounds that trauma. Yeah, Tanya, and you mentioned the resource. So, you know, how did Promises to Kids get started and what was the goal? 
Yeah, so we we were started by three local um, La Jolla's or San Diegans, and uh, one of which was volunteering at the former shelter for abused and neglected children in San Diego. It was called Hillcrest Receiving Home. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would uh, volunteer there and see that it was overcrowded, um, not up to standard in terms of where you would uh, feel it is loving and comforting. And so she said, we could do better as a society and um, set about in partnership with the County of San Diego to raise funds and build what's called Polinsky Children's Center today. So our first project really was to find a solution for temporary shelter for kids in need. And so we raised uh, 13 million and built the center and then turned it over as a gift to the County of San Diego who runs and operates it. Um, so that was our first project. Um, and we've evolved from there and we have uh, many different programs that are all designed to, I look at um, relationships really as the key to anybody's success, right? They're positive. They know that they're loved. They know that there's somebody for them. Um, there's positive adult role models. And so throughout all of our programs, that's really what we aim to provide to children. Oh, wow. Wow. So what are some of the ways that Promise to Kids helps to foster youth? Yeah, so um, one of the programs we have, which is gearing up for summer, um, after a year of being off, it's called Camp Connect. Um, and Love the importance that. for that program is really bringing um, brothers and sisters who may have entered foster care together, mm -hmm. who now unfortunately have to live apart um, while they're in care mm -hmm. for limited resources, different needs. Um, Promises to Kids knows the value of that relationship and wants to bring them together. So we have a four day summer camp and it's only for children who are separated from their brothers and sisters. So they get to go up to camp, mm -hmm. spend that solid time with their children, with their brothers and sisters. And then every month thereafter, we have activities where we may go to the beach. Um, we might go to a museum. It's just all about connection and making sure that that happens. Um, another program that we have is our largest program called Guardian Scholars. And that's a education support program. So again, it's focused around mentoring and case management, and then a little bit of scholarship financial support. Um, okay. Yeah, well, well, you you mentioned the mentorship program. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, so mentoring, we have many different ways to get involved as a mentor. You have to commit to a minimum of one year, um, and you can either be paired one-on-one -on -one with students who are either in vocational training or community college or college, Mm -hmm. um, we're really trying to help them make that transition from foster care to adulthood. We also have two really unique opportunities that developed this year out of um, students' requests. So many of you may not know foster care um, has a disproportionate number of children um, that are in foster care that are representative of ethnic and cultural minorities. So for example, African-American children are about 26% of foster, of foster care. Uh, children, yet in our community, it's closer to eight to 10% representation community wide. So mm -hmm. we know that that's a problem. Um, and same with um, Latinos and Latinas. So our students have asked for specific services um, and specific role models from those two communities. And so we created two mentor groups um, that will be. Um, specific to those two uh, groupings of individuals. So we're looking for African-American males and females and uh, Latinx individuals, uh, males and females, to really just provide a social, but more of a, um, a safe space and a group in which individuals can connect with somebody that they could say, you know what, this person's successful and they look like me and I see myself in them. And that's critically important. Makes sense. Absolutely. So important for a role model. And, and what roles do the mentors play in helping foster youth? So if you were a mentor, what, what does that entail? Yeah. So th since these are older um, young people, many people assume that it's about uh, a career or college and that's part of it. But mm -hmm. just like any individual, if you think about when you were going through that phase in life, everything that you went through, relationship advice, um, you know, uh, navigating just life in general, uh, buying cars, figuring out apartments, figuring out who you are as an individual and who you want to be. And mm -hmm. all of that comes down to the mentor because these individuals don't have that 
same family support somebody else would. So their mentor is that connection. Wow. Well, we definitely know. Yeah, we definitely know that May is Foster Care Awareness Month. So we appreciate you providing that information. Uh, Really quick, how can viewers get more information about your programs? Yeah, so if you go to promisestokids.org and you click on the volunteer button, there's information and a quick link uh, to put in an inquiry. And again, we're recruiting now for those mentors because we want to match them in advance of July, which is when we do all of our awards. So we will have 275 children that we're serving um, through that program alone. So we could wow. use your help. Hey. Amazing, amazing work, Tanya. We so appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> No problem. Well, Danielle, there's so much more love to, and, and care to spread on today's show. In fact, in fact, we're going to continue with a little world class cancer care after the mm-hmm. commercial break. So we'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, uh, ladies, no matter what, um, and no matter how we focus on it, we are always worried about our health, our wellness, and sometimes illnesses still happen. That's absolutely right. So, you know, if someone you love are one of the 1.8 million Americans who receive a cancer diagnosis this year, you want to find the best treatment available. Moore's Cancer Center at UC San Diego Health has been designated as one of the country's top cancer care centers. Take a look. Moore's Cancer Center is the only comprehensive cancer center in San Diego, which has a NCI designation, which NCI stands for National Cancer Institute. And this is designated to only the highest possible ratings in, for cancer centers in the country. And that means that it's Um, experts in every medical subspecialty pushing boundaries for difficult to treat cancers. We have a unique blend of cancer research and patient care, which really helps us take care of the whole patient from research, from bench to bedside interventions with the latest research. And we're really pushing the boundaries to treat each individual cancer as much as possible. We're very proud of our leadership here in the community at UCSD. We just got accreditation from the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer, which really shows our multidisciplinary approach and that we're treating not just one cancer, but the patient, and that we're treating each cancer uniquely and that we're at high level in care. We recognize that no two patients and no two cancers are alike. And so we really feel that cancer care is as unique as you, so you as the patient, and we take each patient as an individual. We treat them as individuals. We really listen to their needs and um, concerns, create an environment that's healing with gardens and supportive environment. And so we really feel like we wanna treat both the patient mind and body with the whole patient. We treat all types of cancers from the common types to extremely rare cancers. Our physicians are setting treatment standards nationwide for more than 200 types of cancers. Um, But the most important cancer that we treat is yours. And we also work as a multidisciplinary approach. So when you see one of our doctors, you're gonna see different type, all the doctors that are treating your cancers, radiation oncology, medical oncology, and surgeons will all be on a team that work to treat your cancer. When we put in the time and care into our patients, they really appreciate it. They feel grateful when we take the time to really talk to them. I feel like they feel heard and feel like we're really listening to them and that we're helping them really beat this cancer diagnosis and helping them be stronger and um, feel better about the outcomes. Wow. Um, 
I know this, ladies. Uh, my grandmother passed away from colon cancer some years ago, so I know it's always important, um, you know, the older I get is to make sure that I, I get screened, you know, as well. So, yeah, I think, I think cancer has impacted probably all of our families. So something that we certainly want to keep at the top of our minds here. And you can find out more information about what UC San Diego Health has to offer at health.ucsd.edu slash cancer. Well, coming up next on Main Street Living, we love helping others and we cannot wait to tell you about the Subaru Love Promise. Find out what that is next. Welcome back into Main Street Living, Quincy. I know we talk about this every week, but I think it's it's time we have to get Cheryl a new car. I'm really worried about our old car. <laughs> hey, hey, 341,000 miles and counting. However, I, I am always thinking about my next new car. And so what if you could get a shiny new car and also help out the community at the same time? Mm. There is a way. Take a look at this. How do I help others versus what do I get? It's amazing what happens. Co-creation, the power of two-ness, if you will, where two people join forces and create something else, creates magic, and it changes everybody's lives. We're able to help the local communities and charities uh, by staying local and using only the local charities here. So we get our community supported from the mothership of Subaru. Make-A-Wish is so great, right? They're national, but they're also hyper-local. This year, through COVID, we were able to help a little girl out and got her a rather large scooter uh, that she needed for mobility. We gave up our Christmas party as employees, and we actually adopted a wish of a young girl here in El Cajon, and we gave her a three-wheel scooter so she didn't have to use her wheelchair all the time. It gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. You know, our employees react to things like Make-A-Wish, Feeding San Diego, and the other groups we help by jumping in. No one asks why, they ask how. Because here at Subaru, we're human beings first, we happen to sell cars second, and because of that, everyone wants to know how we can help those in the community that we serve. Love Promise Moments are part of the mission of what we do here at Subaru El Cajon. A love promise moment is when we as human beings deliver an experience beyond exceptional to any one of our guests, and then that guest's life is positively affected by that interaction. It's amazing to watch what happens when two human beings talk on that level and create something magical. And sometimes they drive away with a car, sometimes they don't, but we've had an impact on that person's life and that's the magic. It's amazing to see one of our biggest events of the year is done in November and December of each year and we can see an immediate uptick of business, people waiting to come in so that they can give money to the local, to the local charities through us. During 2000, COVID, all of the problems we all had, I could speak for hours on that. We saw a need in San Diego where every single theater, from the Old Globe to community theaters to high school theaters, everything was shut down. What we've engaged is a different community that's not normally attached to the car dealerships and asked them to get back to work. So we've hired about 35 different people from a director to a screenwriter to actors to dancers to music writers, and we're creating a musical called Sharing the Love. It's gonna be airing on Cox Cable coming in July. It's absolutely amazing. A car dealership making us a musical. Whoever heard of a thing? Well, it's what we do here at Subaru of El Cajon. Wow, wow, that is pretty cool. I mean, uh, obviously we're gonna be looking out for their musical that's airing on Cox a little bit later, or airing on your view. Uh, but I also like the saying that they had, no one asks why, they ask how. I like I like helping people and I like when you have that type of saying there. What a role model they are. They are doing so much good for the community. And if you wanna find out more about the Subaru Love Promise at Subaru of subaruofelcajon.com, that's where you have to go to check it out. 
That's right. And we're not going anywhere. We've got more Main Street Living coming up next. All right, guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Uh, Cheryl, I believe Danielle is having some technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> the wondrous things of the virtual world. That can yeah, it happens to all of us, but Q, you and I are here to close out the show. Another yeah. fun one, lots of giving back. We love yes. to see that. And that time machine in Rhode Island, I think we have to take a trip. No, no, no. You have to take a trip. That's what <laughs> you do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so don't forget, uh, as always, you guys can catch us on our Cox Contour app at all times. And can't wait to see you guys again next week. Yeah. New episodes Mondays, 9 p.m. local time. Make sure you join us then as we take another stroll down Main Street. <laughs>